Hi everybody, I'm Carl from Imagination Station. This month's tinkering activity is really cool. It's called Squishy Circuits, and we're going to use Play-Doh to make electrical circuits. How cool is that? Now, if you're a member of Imagination Station, don't forget, check out the website for instructions on how to pick up a kit of supplies to do this activity at home. Now, if you can't make your way down here, or you're not a member, we do have a shopping list down below. So if you want to buy things online, that's another way you can participate in this month's Just Tinkering activity. Okay, the first thing you need is Play-Doh, because we're going to use Play-Doh as part of our circuit. Now, if you have Play-Doh at home, it's going to work great, as long as it's not dried out. So make sure it's, it's relatively new and, and, and sort of squishy, if you will. And any color will work. Any kind of ordinary Play-Doh is conductive, and it's going to work great. Now, if you don't have Play-Doh at home, we've got a recipe down below where you can make your own conducting Play-Doh. We'll talk about that a little bit later. All right, so Play-Doh, first ingredient. Next ingredient is some sort of power source. Since we're making circuits, we're going to use batteries. Now, I kind of like these really big six volt lantern batteries because they've got these two great terminals on top that are really easy to connect things up to. So if you have one of these, this will work great. If you don't have one of those, a nine volt battery will work wonderfully. And you know, with the nine volt batteries, I find that um, it's actually kind of fun to use two of them clipped together like this to provide an 18 volt battery because of the next thing that we're gonna use, which is two pieces of wire with alligator clips on either end. And, you know, I like this battery because it's really easy to connect up your clip to one terminal, your clip to the other terminal. And then at the other end, we have nails sort of taped into place. And these nails are gonna be critical for inserting into our Play-Doh to sort of power up the circuit, okay? If we didn't have the nails, what'll happen over time is the terminals, because of the electricity flowing through them in the Play-Doh, which is kind of moist, they'll start to corrode and they won't make very good circuits. So if the nails start to get sort of cruddy looking or, you know, a little stuff on it, you can either scrape it off or you can replace the nail. A little bit of sandpaper would also help fix it up. So let's make, let's make a simple circuit here right away and, and, and see what we're talking about. We've got our six volt battery here. I've got some blue Play-Doh. Remember, it doesn't matter what color it is. Any kind of Play-Doh is gonna work. So there's sort of one wire. Here's another wire. And if we insert one side and insert the other side, we've made the beginnings of a circuit, but a circuit is a complete flow of electricity or electrons from one side of the battery to the other. So we need something to light up. And that thing is gonna be an LED, a light emitting diode. You see these things in all kinds of electronics. They're, they're everywhere. And so I'm just gonna push that in between the two pieces of Play-Doh and it lights up because the Play-Doh is conductive. Where there's a flow of electricity through the LED and then back to the battery. That's a complete circuit. Now, if yours didn't light up, I have a, t a, a little thing for you. Watch this, if I just spin the LED around, it won't light up. Turns out the LEDs act as sort of like a one-way valve for electricity. So if your LED didn't light up the first time you connected it, don't worry, just take it and flip its orientation around and it should light up. Now, a word of caution here, since we've got the battery right here, it would be very tempting, I think, to take an LED and try to put it right across the terminals of your battery if you do that, it's a really interesting experiment called burning out your LED. Don't do that, okay? It turns out the Play-Doh provides a little bit of resistance to the current flow so that we provide just enough electricity to light the LED up, but not let it burn out, okay? So keep the LEDs away from the terminals of your battery. So this is the, the basics of how we would make a simple circuit using a battery and some conductive Play-Doh. And this sort of circuit is actually called a series circuit because we don't have to stop at just one LED. If we wanted to, we could create a couple more little pieces of conductive Play-Doh here. Let me, let me uh, rearrange this a little bit. I'll bring in another piece, add our battery terminal there. 
And now, let's see, now I want this LED. I'm gonna put this one in here and see if we can get it to light up. And it doesn't. And see, this is the problem, not the problem, it's a property of the series circuit, is that if this LED is in backwards, this LED can't light up. So remember the tip I told you is that if it doesn't work, just flip it around. And now we've got both of them lit up. I don't know if you notice, they look kind of dim too. They're not quite as bright as they were before because now the voltage of this battery is being split over both of the LEDs. So each one is getting three volts applied to it as opposed to six volts when you just had one. Let's just try that really quick here. Oh, look at, see how bright that is? It really makes a big difference. So this is called a series circuit. And if you remember old Christmas tree lights used to be like this, you'd have 50 or so lights in the string and it'd be somebody's job to figure out which of the 50 lights was burned out and then replace it. Kind of a bummer. So let's try a different kind of circuit. Instead of a series circuit, let's talk about a parallel circuit. And just for fun, we're gonna swap out the battery too. I'm gonna go to my two nine volt batteries that I've clipped together. And the reason I like this is because if you just have one nine volt battery and you try to like put the clips on, it's really easy to get the two clips to sort of touch one another and then you just kind of short out the battery. But if you clip them together, not only do you get the benefits of adding nine volts plus nine volts to get a 18 volt battery, it's easier to keep the uh, terminals away from one another. So let's see, can we, can we light up our, you know what? I switched the polarity. So we got to switch both of them around. And you can see now with the 18 volts, both LEDs are a lot brighter than using just the six volt battery. So applying a greater voltage, you get a brighter light, but we still have them all in a single line. And so if any one of them goes out like this one, everything goes out. Let's do a different circuit. Let's, let's move this out of the way. We're gonna use a different color of Play-Doh too, just for fun, because that's what makes Play-Doh fun, is you can have different colors. And the colors are all conductive. Okay, now, we're gonna connect these two lines of Play-Doh up, and we have now what's called a parallel circuit, okay? So if I take one of my LEDs and embed it in there, it'll light up. If I take another one, it'll light up. If I do another one, it will not light up because I put it in backwards, but it doesn't affect the other two. So this is the beauty of the parallel circuit, is that the electricity flowing out of the battery is going through this LED back to the battery, forming the circuit. Electricity is flowing through this LED and back to the battery, forming another circuit. And electricity is not flowing through that LED, and that's okay, it doesn't affect the other ones. That's a parallel circuit. Now, you know, we've been playing with the LEDs and sometimes we put them in like the wrong way or backwards. And if you don't wanna just rely upon like guessing all the time, one thing you can do is if you look at the LEDs before you bend their leads, one side, I don't know if you can see that, one side is a little bit shorter than the other. That's the negative side. And if you roll the LED between your fingers, you can feel there's a flat side on the short terminal. And that is the negative terminal. So that's one way you can figure it out just by sort of feeling the LEDs and putting them in there. Now, this is cool, but there's one potential flaw or sort of deal breaker in building squishy circuits with Play-Doh. And that is, if your Play-Doh, yeah, let me put that back together, if your Play-Doh touches, you create what's called a short circuit. And the LEDs won't light up because it's easier for the electricity to flow out of the battery through this part of the Play-Doh and then back to the battery. It doesn't, it doesn't wanna go, it doesn't need to go through those LEDs. It's found the path of least resistance. So, we have a solution for this. We have instructions on how to do this. This is so cool. You can make insulating Play-Doh. Play-Doh that will not conduct electricity. And it's super easy to do. You don't have to cook anything. It's a mixture of flour, sugar, oil, and water. And I like to make my insulating Play-Doh red. Kind of like red for stop, green for go. And what you can do with this is you can add it in between your conductive Play-Doh. And now you can smoosh the Play-Doh together as long as, here, let me change the length here, as long as you don't push that part together. Now, we've got 
I don't know if it's like a hot dog or something like that, hot dog structure. But now the cool thing you can do is you can actually squish your LEDs in, and it doesn't matter if the LED terminals touch the red part, it's not conductive. And so you can imagine with non-conductive Play-Doh, you could start to build up three-dimensional structures or things that have layers in them that will light up and do things like this. Um, so, you know, I don't know, for example, what could we do? We could, um, we could take a little, a, a tiny circle of conductive Play-Doh, right? And then, let's see, I've got some insulating stuff right here. If we make a, like a ring around it, and now we've got to complete the circuit, so we're going to need some more conductive Play-Doh on the outside. Need a little bit more. And that's what's cool about Play-Doh. Just like smush it together. And it's okay if we smush it together because now we've made, I don't know if this is like a, a cookie or a sushi roll of some sort. But here, I'm gonna apply power to the blue on the outside and I'm gonna apply power to the blue on the inside. Now nothing's gonna happen because we haven't put an LED in there. But if we bridge the blue with an LED, we can get it to light up. And so, I don't know what ideas you have. My, the, the biggest thing I could come up with was like a sushi roll here, but maybe you have ideas. Can you build a dinosaur? Can you build a snail? I don't know what, but can you do it in like three dimensions? If you do, share it with us. We wanna see what you might be able to think of that you can create using conductive and non-conductive Play-Doh together to make an interesting structure. So that is our tinkering activity for this month. Again, if you're a member, check out the website, imaginationstationtoledo.org, where you can find instructions on how to pick up a supply kit to do this activity. If you're not a member, you should become one, or you can purchase supplies in the list down below and um, the LEDs and all that sort of stuff. And check out our instructions for the insulating and conductive Play-Doh. In fact, if you make your own conductive Play-Doh, it's actually kind of cool. You can add more salt to the mixture to make it really conductive, far more conductive than the Play-Doh you might buy at a store. So lots of variables you can play with there, lots of cool stuff. Thanks for checking this out and check out or keep watching for next month's activity as well for just tinkering from Imagination Station. See you later.